everyone. Welcome to Influential Beach. I'm honored today to be talking to my dear friend, Corey Marchesoto, CMO of Elf Cosmetics. Uh, I put my iPad down because we're just going to talk. So, Corey, what's on your mind? That's good. I'm going to tell you what's on my mind. Yesterday I had a speaking engagement. Somebody will have to remind me where that was because yesterday was 100 years in one day. And Patrick texted me, Patrick O'Keefe, front row, head of integrated marketing comms. Patrick, he texted me while I was on stage, K boss, I'm going to need you to look at the stock price. Yesterday we crossed $110. We crossed a $6 billion market cap. And why that's really exciting is because in the last 12 months alone, we have posted 308% growth in our stock price. Wow. So when I think about that, um, I have to go back four years ago when I started. And to put this all into context, Four years ago, that stock price was $7.95. Yesterday, it hit $111. That's, that's a good thing for anybody who doesn't know numbers. So when I think about what could actually drive that kind of success, it comes down to one key word, and it's community. Being in touch with your community, being in lockstep with your community, and literally orienting your entire organization around the people that you serve. And that starts with the people that are in your boardroom, the people that are in your C-suite, and how you staff your organization to be a mirror image of the community you serve. So let's talk about foundationally. What, when, when you came to ELF and you were tasked with this job, what, what in your mind was, was success, and, and how did you go about that methodology to get to where you are right now? So as anybody does when they have 30 interviews over three months, which is what it took me to get this job, 30 interviews in three months, which I think would not happen today, yeah. right? This is pre-COVID. Um, you almost become a mini consultant for the company, right? You've got to understand one, do I want to be here? Do I want to work with these people? Do I believe in the business proposition? But most importantly, do I believe in the potential? Is there a margin of progression that I could come in and make an impact? So the first thing I did was play the role of a consumer. And when I went on the journey, I found a million cracks in the chain. When I got inside the organization, what I found was that all the cracks in the chain were a mirror image of the organizational structure. Siloed, not oriented around the community. And I thought to myself, if we change the structure to reflect the community, then we can have an outsized impact even in the short term. That's the low hanging fruit, right? Reorient this entire organization to have a consistent thread top down. So that was the first place I needed to start. Do I have the right people in the right places doing the right things? More importantly, where are the gaps? Where are the white spaces? And we had a huge white space in the paid, owned, earn area. The structural challenge was we didn't have boots on the ground in the places that mattered most, your hometown of LA, my friend. So I went looking for somebody who could operate that zone of the business and really propel us in social relevance. And I hired this crazy guy named Patrick O'Keefe. Oh, handsome man. Uh, when, when he started, we had no LA office. We now have an LA office in WeHo that he runs. We had two people in the department. We now have 25. So making sure that we had resonance and relevance was fundamental. The other thing I did was ask 100 elves, what, what is elf? Describe elf to me. And I got 100 different answers. So I needed to build and codify a structural framework around who is our brand, what is the personality, what are we doing here, why are we here, and why would you want to come hang out with us? And once we put that all into practice, filled the gaps and the white spaces, you start to see the wins. And then you lean into those signals. 
But I think most importantly is never digging your heels on the ground and say what I decided to do on that day is right today. Every single day we wake up and we ask ourselves what do we need to be doing differently. Despite the fact that all the points are there on the board and the stock price reflects it and the 17 consecutive quarters of growth and the 18 consecutive quarters of market share gains, that is the most important time to ask yourself what needs to be different and what do we need to change to drive the next 12 months of performance? So you guys are kind of like the little engine that could, the, the David to the Goliath. You're going against companies that you, you told me yourself have tens of thousands of employees. How the hell do you even go up against that? And how do you continue to succeed and surpass them? So just contextually again, because I'm not sure everybody follows the beauty space, there are um, BMS, as I would call them, or Goliaths, as you call them. Uh, number one and number two are L'Oreal and Maybelline. And they have been around for over 100 years. They've been building market share, residence, relevance, all the things for over 100 years. When I started, ELF was in the number five chair. So three and four were Revlon and CoverGirl. And those brands are 80 and 60, respectively. The young gun, Elf, is now 19 years old, 15 when I started, is now sitting in the number three chair, and to your point, competing with number one and number two, tens of thousands of employees and budgets that are bigger than my entire revenue, right? Our entire company's revenue. The fundamental difference is our culture. We create the cultural conditions necessary for innovation to happen every single day. So when I think about the difference, it starts with how do we motivate our employees? And we motivate our employees by making them all shareholders. Why do I talk about stock price and why is that important? Because every single elf is a shareholder. The community managers, the social media managers, the office managers, if you are a full-time employee of the company, you are a stockholder. This is the only beauty company publicly traded that says those words out loud. And if you peel back ELF, you will find a million first evers, things no other company ever dreamt possible, things they would never dream of doing. That's our modus operandi. What beauty company would partner with Chipotle? None of them. <laughs> and I, I could do this all day. I could do this all day. Right? She well, can, I've seen her. Yeah, so I think fundamental for us is one, you've gotta make sure that your employees are waking up every single day, they have the freedom to innovate, and they have the desire to innovate because it's gonna impact them personally, right? Wealth creation over time is our driving force behind our internal employee. The second thing is, who are we actually serving and how do we serve them in a way that's gonna be unique and differentiated? that's gonna make them wanna come back over and over every day. And this can't just be about a functional benefit of a product. If you are just here to sell a product, you are not going to make it over the long term. What is the relationship that you are building with the community you serve, and why would they wanna come back to your party? There's, there's 100 beaches here. Why are you choosing to come to the influential beach? And why would you choose to come back here next year? So, it's because of the relationship you have with this guy. So what's really important is what is this relationship we're building? Why would you want to come back here? And most importantly, how do I get you to come back here over and over again? And we do that by not thinking about being a beauty company, but we think about being an entertainment company. 14 million people are showing up on our doorstep every day. We have to be elfing entertaining the content we develop, the people that we showcase, which includes our community. So when you break it down structurally, once you have your organization in place and you're capitalizing on your white space opportunities, once you make sure your employees like have high desire to drive, innovation clearance to wake up every day and say, I can actually go make this crazy shit happen, clear the runway, then you can have a lot of fun. And it's hard to beat a team that's having a good time. It's hard to beat a team that's having a good time. Elfing entertaining you are. Um, so let's talk about something that I think is fucking crazy. Um, 
Elfing crazy. Elfing crazy. It's Elfing crazy. Elfing. Pardon my French. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, cosmetics companies do not do Super Bowl commercials. What were you thinking? <laughs> and, and how, 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 did you, how did you do something that would get most people fired and make it into a revelation? And how did you get Jennifer Coolidge and Mike White to be a part of this? I, I mean, it was this, if you guys haven't seen this, you need to Google it immediately. The best Super Bowl commercial was done by this woman. And she's going to tell you all about it right now. It wasn't done by me. It was done by a team of renegade spirits with a bias Fair. for action at speed. So it's absolutely elfing insane. And that is my barometer for the yes energy. So actually, Evan and Jeff are in the room, and they coined Yes Energy when they started working with us four years ago. I said, what makes us different than every other company you work with? And they said, it's the Elf Yes Energy. I don't ask why, I ask why the Elf not. So you just said to me, why would you do a Super Bowl commercial when there are no cosmetic brands in the Super Bowl? And the more and more you make it sound nuts, the more and more is my barometer for the Yes Energy. And actually, the biggest barometer I have is how uncomfortable is my CEO? As his level of discomfort rises, I'm like, I am on to something really big here. In the case of the Super Bowl, which was not an accident by any stretch, we had this product called Power Grip Primer, which was breaking all records. For those of you who don't know what a primer is, just think about what happens when you go to Home Depot and you have to paint your walls. You got to prime the wall first. This is how I have to explain to men what a primer is. And I have to do this all day with the investors. So you go to Home Depot, you get a primer, you paint, and then you can put paint on it. That's what we do to lay a solid foundation for us to put makeup on and have our canvas be seamless. This particular primer is super sticky, so your makeup sticks to it and it has an all-day grip. Is this starting to make sense, all-day grip? So he's like, no, I still don't understand how this leads to the Super Bowl, but I'm going to get there. So we have in, time. in the cosmetic space, the number one, two, three, four, and five SKUs in all of mass cosmetics are mascaras, because mascara is a category one. What that means is the biggest category in the business is mascara. A primer is a category 13, 13th biggest segment in cosmetics. So everybody said it is absolutely impossible. A primer could never be the number one skew in all of mass cosmetics because it's a category 13. All of the number one skews are category ones or category twos. Challenge accepted. Power grip primer busts on the seams and it is in the number two position, number two. I hate being number two. I'd rather be number five. I can't be number two. I can't, this is not possible. So we asked ourselves, what's the, A, what's the distance between us and number one? And two, how foreseeable is it that we could achieve that goal? So my head of insights said, okay boss, uh, we're actually not that far from taking down the number one mascara and becoming the first brand ever to hold the number one chair for a non-mascara SKU. So I said, okay, challenge accepted, team. Now, what do we do with that information? Because clear, honestly, we had no idea. January 19th, Jennifer Coolidge gets a Golden Globe. She gets interviewed after, and they ask her, if you had to play a dream role, what would that dream role be? And she said, I'd like to play a dolphin. She sent out the dolphin signal. I'm like, well, we got a primer that gives you dolphin skin. So we asked ourselves, what if we took what is about to be the number one skew in all of mass cosmetics, total star in the sky, and we paired it with the number one cultural icon, and we found a stage big enough to put that on. What stage on January 19th could you foresee would be the biggest stage that you could ever put anything on? Maybe the Super Bowl? Okay. Now, here's the biggest problem with that. The Super Bowl was in three weeks. Yeah. 
I'm, 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 I'm thinking about this timeline and I'm like, is this fucking real? Okay, so three weeks. Now, I would just like to take a step backwards for a second because you guys may know companies like Anheuser-Busch and Nabisco and the biggest companies in the world. And if you ask them how long it takes them to do a Super Bowl ad, do you know what the answer is? 18 months. I was going to say years. Okay. So I go into my boss's office and I said, boss, I got a crazy idea. And this is when he starts shaking. I said, we're going to do a Super Bowl commercial featuring Power Grip Primer and Jennifer Coolidge. And he came from Procter & Gamble, so he knows Super Bowl timelines. And he looked at me and he goes, are you out of your elfing mind? He goes, even if you could get Jennifer Coolidge, which sounds wild and bonkers, there's no way you're going to get a Super Bowl commercial to market by February 12th. You know what I said? Watch me. <laughs> we wrote a dolphin script for Jennifer Coolidge. We sent it to Mike White. He's like, you guys literally just wrote the perfect script for her dream role. They gave it to, to Jennifer Coolidge. She said, Elf? I love Elf. They're vegan and cruelty-free. Swear to God, guys. Signed the contract, went on set in LA, shot for 14 hours, delivered the commercial to the network on time. What fuels the possibilities next to the yes energy and actually having fire in the face of challenge, which is really fundamental. Like when you tell me I can't do something, it gives me all the energy I need to go actually make it happen, is that we surrounded ourselves with a team of people who believe that anything is elfing possible. Because if you handed that challenge to all of our competitors, they would have said no way can that happen. And what we said is, anything is elfing possible. Let's give it a shot. That wasn't even a three-pointer. That was like a, I don't even know. <laughs> Full court shot. <laughs> so if you believe that you can, you can. If you believe that you can't, you can't. Love it. Um, so I'm going to keep talking to her. The only thing I want to ask, because um, there's supposed to be another panel on right now, but I don't know if you're here. Um, I, is, is, is anybody else mad right now that they're not up here? Because if they're not, then I'm just going to go back to talking to her. And if anybody has questions... Five minutes, okay. We got I love minutes. questions. If anybody wants to ask us anything... Yeah. And if not, I've got questions, but... Anybody? Douglas. So, gentlemen in the front row over here in the great top and the beautiful pants, just and I love the striped socks. Uh, just said what what the elf is next is I think the question that you were asking us is what what the elf is next It's the same formula every time and that formula starts with tune the elf in Tune the elf into your community and watch for signals every single day But do not find those signals in reports. I Do not have relationships with reports. I have relationships with people I personally go on TikTok live and I stream with our audience and I ask them, what do you want to see from us? What do you love about us? Why do you want that thing? Why do you love that thing? So I can get under the hood on their unique needs, wants, and desires. And then we look to the stars for answers. We take all this information that we've received and we look for the biggest shining stars in the sky. And when we connect the dots to make a constellation, we put our feet on the ground, we draw an action plan, and we drive it to market in real time. That is our formula for success. Tune in, dream big, make it happen fast. Any other questions? The man with the nice hat. Please start with an elfism. Like, drop an elfism in your question. Like, what How the elf? the elf do you get your team prepared for this sprint? So my name is Nate Nichols, creative director, founder of Palette Group, creative agency out of Brooklyn. And I'm just hearing you, um, you know, talk about how the elf, y'all are like super progressive and innovative. And my question is, is how do you ensure your team is set up for a culture like that? Like, what are the different tactics you're doing to create that culture? Not just internally, but externally for your partners, because that is a potentially alienating position to put your vendors in. Um, and so I'd love to hear your perspective on that. 
I love this question, Nate, and thanks for the elf bomb. Uh, actually, I have a lot of our agencies in the room right now. Evan and Jeff, raise your hands. Um, I probably shouldn't tell the world this, but we might be their favorite client. I don't know, just gonna put that out there. Um, so actually, our agencies, Nate, love working with us because all of their other partners have red tape and velvet ropes and long lines of processes of pushing propositions uphill for six, nine, 12 months before they get an approval. And what drives ELF is that yes energy. Yes, we can. So when they bring us crazy ideas, our response is, hell elfing yes, let's go do it. And they're like, what, when do you want to do that? We're like, right elfing now. So actually, the creatives are unleashed every day because they can. And the difference with other companies is there's a lot of red tape in their organizations because you have to feed a lot of egos that have to put a lot of stamps on things. We actually value innovation and creativity, not egos. So we actually want to bring that creativity and innovation to life. We live for it. That's like the, the rocket fuel for our rocket ship. How creative can you be is what we ask our agencies. And then we're going to take your creative juices and we are going to fly them. So that's how we set them up for success is by actually taking them out of the cage and setting them free. All right, we have time for one more question. Any takers? I can shout. It's a bit of a comment, and maybe there's a question in here. Um, I just I love the Jennifer Coolidge, love the backstory. That was terrific. And I guess part of the comment is um, the reason why I come to Cannes is because I am here to talk about making age as agnostic and making age an element of diversity. I'm from AARP. And the fact that you put a nearly 60-year-old woman in your ad, because she is a cultural icon, um, just want to applaud that and recognize and hope that maybe that wasn't even a conversation back in the office, that why were we putting somebody who was almost 60 front and center in our Super Bowl ad? Because people of all ages really want to see themselves reflected in the creative that we put out there. And it's maybe possible that part of your growth is coming from a surprising audience, which is the older woman. So, ELF puts the every, every, capital E, capital V, capital E, capital R, capital Y. ELF is for every eye, lip, and face. And when you put those words and you say them out loud, it has a lot of meaning and it also comes with a responsibility. And every single ELF feels a very strong responsibility to put the E in every. Every eye, lip, and face can find themselves in our brand. No, no age, no color, no, all colors, shapes, everybody is welcome in our house. And the most important part of that equation is that when they come to our house, they find people that look like them. And I'm gonna take that all the way up to the board of directors because I think this is a fundamental part of our success is that we put women and diversity in the highest seats of decision-making power. If you want to understand what is the driving force, if you want to change the world, change the board, okay? There are 4,200 publicly traded companies in the US. I'm gonna say that one more time because these numbers really matter and we should put companies to task. 4,200 publicly traded companies in the United States of America, of which four, only four, have a board of directors that is two-thirds women and one-third diverse. Only four. We are one of them. And this is really important because Gen Z comes to our earnings calls, reads our impact report. They could buy a hundred different products that look like ours. Of course, ours are better quality at a better price, but let's put that aside for a of second. Course. But what this generation wants to know is who's in your boardroom, who's on your board of directors. And when they ask us, we can tell them that they look like you. 
Our board of directors is a representation of the people we serve. Our C-suite is a representation of the people we serve. That is the driving force behind our success. If you do not put women and diversity in the boardroom, then what the elf are you doing? Because everybody's gonna be called to task to be doing that because 90% of all purchases are either made by or influenced by a woman. 90% of all purchases, right? So we need to call companies to task, which we are doing. We are putting marketing dollars by saying we don't want to be one of four. We want more than four. Change the board and you can change the world. Now that is an elfing mic drop. Let's give it up for K-Boss, Corey Marchisoto. Thank you so much.